In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install the GE Tetra PowerStrip DS LED lighting system as a retrofit in a 4x8 foot sign. This sign is going to be refurbished in the shop with the Tetra PowerStrip DS LED system and will also be refaced and painted. Always be sure to read the installation guide before you begin work. And I'm sure you know to disconnect power before servicing or installing any electrical product. If you're going to handle the retrofit on site, I recommend making a trip to the site to survey the materials needed. I also recommend going to the GE Lumination website, www.lumination.com, to use their online material estimator form. Also, be sure to check local building codes where the sign is located. Some local codes are more stringent than the National Electric Code, and you need to comply with all local codes. Color temperature descriptions can be called differently between fluorescent and LEDs. For example, if your sign is designed for cool white fluorescent, you'll want to use our 4100 Kelvin Tetra Power Strip DS LED system. If your sign is designed for daylight fluorescent, you want Tetra Power Strip LED system with a color temperature of 6500 Kelvin. I've already removed the fluorescent tubes, wires, sockets, and ballasts from the guts of the sign. I've kept the raceways so I have an internal structure to screw the mountings into and to house the primary wire. After you've removed the original fluorescent equipment in the sign, make sure to check for anything that might compromise the integrity of the sign body such as holes that could result in water getting inside the sign. Fill all holes with the appropriate amount of rated caulk or sealant. For holes greater than a half inch, use an aluminum or zinc coated steel patch with rivets and sealant. Start by determining the row spacing for your layout. If your Tetra Power Strip DS modules will be less than six inches from the sign face, space your rows 10 inches apart. If your tubes will be 6 inches or more from the face, space your rows 12 inches apart. This sign is 16 inches deep, so the Tetra Power Strip DS LED system will be 8 inches from the face. I need to space my rows 12 inches apart. Find the position for the center row, then work out from the center at 10 inch or 12 inch increments. That approach will give you even lighting throughout the sign. Measure the distance from the internal edge to edge. In this case, I'm measuring from raceway to raceway. If you don't have raceways, measure from edge to edge. Measure the Tetra Power Strip DS tube for the appropriate length. Subtract three and a half inches. That's an inch and a half per end cap and an extra quarter inch gap on each side to allow for expansion of the tubes. When cutting the Tetra Power Strip DS tube, don't press down too hard, otherwise the acrylic tube might crack or splinter. If you're using a power saw, ease the blade down through the tube. If using a handsaw, use smooth strokes and let the saw do the work. Clear the area of plastic dust and debris and trim off any burrs. Arrange the LED modules in the tube and snap the modules into the channel. When the LED modules are in the channel, they won't move. If you gently shake the tube and the modules move, they're not in the channel properly. I also like to run my wiring between LED modules in the channel for a neater appearance. Fit the second half of the tube into the tongue and groove and snap the tube halves together. Feed the wire through the end cap and slide the end cap onto the tube. Place the Tetra Power Strip DS assembly into position and fasten to the sign with two number six screws. For any horizontal assembly greater than four feet in length, you must install support stringers and use assembly supports every four feet. For longer spans up to ten feet, you can install a tube connector on a support stringer. Then, 
push the tube ends into the connector. Internal structures, like support braces, can create shadowing in the sign. When you're determining your layout, be sure to position your modules away from the structures to minimize shadowing. You're now ready for electrical connections. Be sure to refer to the 24-volt power supply installation instructions for loading and remote mounting information. Make sure you install all electrical connections in accordance with National Electric and all of your local codes. Mount the power supply inside the sign. Or if you're planning to do a remote mount, run the wire into the sign and connect to the first LED module on the strip. Connect the LED modules to each other and to the power supply using twist-on wire connectors or inline connections. Connect positive to positive and negative to negative. Cap all exposed wires with appropriate end caps. On a new installation, it might make sense to remote mount the power supply at the base of the sign, rather than inside the sign itself. That way, you don't have to bring in a bucket truck if you need to service the power supply. Now connect the power supply to the main power source. Verify that the power supply rating matches the power source input voltage. Connect the black AC line to the black input wire of the power supply. Connect the white neutral line to the white wire of the power supply. That's how it's done. Now, power up and make sure all the modules are lit. Also check to see if LED modules are too close to interior structures that might cause shadowing. And reposition your LED modules or tubes if necessary. Your Tetra Power Strip DS LED System Installation Guide has solutions for troubleshooting you can refer to. And you can always call GE Illumination for technical support at 1-888-MY-GE-LED. Or visit us on the web at www.lumination.com.